Hello, uh, my name is James O'Keefe. I uh, just passed out a flyer. I'm with the Pirate Party. Uh, one of the things we do is to help people protect their privacy. And so on one side of the, uh, some of you may have heard about this thing called the Equifax hack or the Equihax, um, where Equifax lost um, the names, addresses, social security numbers, and various other information for about 142, 152 million Americans. Um, that leaves all of those folks uh, even more vulnerable to identity fraud. So we put together this little flyer that we've been giving out that tells people uh, what they can do to lock down their credit at the three or four uh, credit rating agencies. Um, on the back, we also do things called crypto parties, where we teach people how to protect their privacy online and in their computers. Uh, and those are kind of, we've been doing that for oh, I don't know, five years. And those are kind of some of the baseline stuff that we do at like the 101 training. But um, the reason why I'm here is uh, I've run for office as some would call it independent. At the time in 2002, I was in the Green Party. Um, I ran for um, state treasurer of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is a statewide office. Um, got 163 or so thousand votes in my first run in 2002 and 320,000 in my second run. Um, and uh, that was when clean elections was around. Uh, so those were heady days of being able to not be beholden to wealthy contributors. Um, but <clears throat> in that process, um, I've learned a couple of things. Uh, I've been helping with uh, getting candidates to run. Um, I'm with the Pirate Party now. We, we, believe in, we believe you should have privacy and the government shouldn't. It's kind of our tagline. Uh, but running as an independent, especially for uh, state legislative offices or county offices, um, is a pretty big undertaking. I um, mean, I encourage everyone to run for town meeting member, or select board, or I live in Somerville, uh, Board of Aldermen, or City Council, say in Cambridge or Boston. Um, but as a candidate, um, the odds are stacked against you, as it, certainly as an independent candidate, but even in general, incumbents have a lot of power. Um, about 60% of all legislators in uh, the House and the Senate have no opposition in the general election. 60% year after year it varies between 70 and 50%, but that's still high. And in my mind, that's not really a democracy. But so I encourage folks to run. But these are kind of my advice. So one as a candidate is you have to know your goal. And that is why are you running? Uh, but also what your objectives are. Now, I'm in the pirate party, so I'm thinking long term. So it isn't just that I run a candidate and say, if you can't, if you don't have a chance of winning, don't run. Because for me, as a pirate, I want to get our message out. And the way we do that, by holding things like crypto parties, but also by running candidates that people can actually vote for. And we've run candidates for state representative, a uh, guy in Somerville got about 2,600 votes um, against a longtime incumbent Democrat. Uh, actually, in that district, it's kind of funny. The only competitor she's ever had has been a pirate twice in two of the five, two of the I don't know six or so elections she's done. Pretty popular. She is popular, yes, and she did win. Um, so, you know, once you know your goal. You know, it could, be to, it could be to win, it could be just to get your name out there, taking a long-term perspective. Um, you know, you got to make sure all your family members have signed on. When I ran in 2002, you know, I had a two-year-old, my wife and I, you know, there were a lot of stresses on our relationship. So if you're going to run full out, you really need to make sure everyone's signed on. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of tension and you don't want to end up not married <laughs> because of that. Um, but also, if you've got people signed on, if people are committed to it, then you know you have their full support. Um, you want to enlist your friends and uh, neighbors and other supporters. You know, I'm in the Pirate Party, so there's people who signed up. Uh, but also, you know, family 
friends, uh, start out early, do your best to get them involved. Uh, can we help? Yeah. What is the process? Like, so I want to run for state rep. What is the process? That's my next thing. So know your dates and rules, right? Which is, <clears throat> in Massachusetts, to get on the ballot, you need 150 uh, voters to sign your nomination papers, 300 if you're doing uh, state senate, 2,000 if you want to run for House of Rep you know, U.S. House of Representatives. Um, and functionally, the, the nice thing is an independent, you can take, or even as a pirate, you can take signatures from anybody. If you're a Democrat, you can only take signatures from those who are Democrats or unenrolled, Republican, only Republican or unenrolled. But, um, but for independents or unenrolled, you can take them from anyone. Um, so 150, and as, as you had pointed out before, that's, that's really more like 100 and really more like two, 300 potentially. You, know, you get people who will sign George Washington, you get people who will sign uh, they think they're registered one place, but really they're not. Um, the signature's illegible. I mean, I, I've gotten quite adept at um, the whole spiel about getting people to sign the, the papers right. Um, the best thing to do is simply go door to door. Um, we've had the most effective way is just literally, because you know if they're, at, if, if they're there, odds are they're a voter, and if they're not a voter, you have your voter registration Forms <laughs> and you register them. Are you thinking of running for third party? No, 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 I was just saying if I were right. running okay, for third okay. So for the, the legislature, nomination papers are available about middle of February and uh, they have to be to city clerks by, I believe, the end of April. And then they have to, once, all, once they've gone through and validated them, uh, they have to go and get to the state elections division. That's just getting on the ballot. There's campaign finance laws that you have to, like you can take up to $1,000 now from, uh, any from any person at all uh, per year. Um, you have to report, if, if they give more than $50, $50 or more, then they have to, you've got to write down their, we well, always have to write down the name and the address, but if they give over 50, then you have to reveal that in your campaign finance report. If they give over 200, then you also have to get your name their their uh, occupation and employer um so there are various rules and there's a how to run uh I'm just trying to thought uh how there's a how to run guide that the secretary of state has with all of the offices yes will that also be the over in kind um, services to that is correct yes absolutely in kind or if someone does a check or cash uh though usually you want to check can you explain what in-kind is, just for people who don't know? Sure. That's where um, someone says, I will, uh, I will pay for a bunch of yard signs. So they go and, and you make the order, and they, instead of writing the campaign a check, they write a check to uh, the company that made the yard signs. And so that would be counted as an in-kind and has to be reported. Uh, yeah. In-kind, um, if you're friend happened to be a baker and wanted to do an in-kind donation of baked goods for some event. So if, if I recall correctly, and Steve can correct me, I believe that qualifies as, um, uh, <clears throat> that, that, I'm forgetting the term. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, um, so for, so if you're doing, uh, performing a service for a candidate, uh, it's not an in-kind. So, for example, if um, you, know, you know an accountant, and the yeah. accountant was going to keep track of your uh, finance or check your books for you, uh, that would be considered a service rather than um, an in-kind. Because based now, if an in-kind would be someone paying the accountant to. Ah, uh, okay. But, so that's however, but also the baked goods in her example would be in-kind. But that could if be a customer. But the, the materials, the materials, yeah. yeah. So but, if you purchase flour, sugar, all that stuff to bake it, that would be. Well, but you don't have to report to like the cost of people participating in your campaign, the parking they have to pay, the food they have to. Yeah, you don't have to. That's a lot of money that people are putting in to support you. I guess, Steve, I was trying to get to the customary hospitality, now that I remember it. 
Um, that there's that that if someone you know if someone were to do maybe a thousand uh, cupcakes, that might be a problem. But if you're having an event and someone brings some chips and someone brings some soda. You know, that's just customary hospitality and isn't, you don't have to account for that, if I recall correctly. Interesting, okay. Yeah. You're not going to get in trouble by reporting it. You absolutely you will never get in trouble by reporting it. That is correct. Report. That is correct. So if somebody bakes you 50 cupcakes or 30 cupcakes and you write that down, the guy that does the auditing is going to go, why the hell did you do that? <laughs> that's fine. Right, but you're, you're covered <laughs> campaign finance wise, yes. And that's that's the thing for campaign finance reports. <laughs> yeah, uh, always file them by the date because if you file later, then it's I believe twenty five dollars every day late uh, in the out of the candidate's pocket. So not out of the campaign's pocket, out of the candidate's pocket. Well, and the, the or the treasurer. Out of the treasurer's pocket, I can tell you that first thing. Yeah. Um, but the, the key, so, so even if you're like, I don't have all the information, it's better to file. I mean, I recommend you have all the information, but it's better to file and then amend, and you won't get that penalty. Uh, I wouldn't do it often, but. Um, so, you know, know, you know, know the rules, know your dates. Um, like, I, I remember there was one uh, legislator who brought his nomination. He had already won. He brought his nomination papers left them on his desk, and they just disappeared. And so he had to do a write-in campaign to there get was on. Got the wrong forms. There was a guy who got the wrong forms. Yes, always make sure that, and, right. and he, he was told by the... He trusted the Secretary of State to give him the correct form, even though he had been decanted training and saw him, and he told him that he needed to give him the correct form. And he was white for the big parties and yellow for everybody else. Right. He got 15,000 signatures on the wrong form. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, so he, I mean, he, he got the signatures and then he, you know, couldn't hand them in. And they were like, well, this isn't our problem. So always, you know, I'm not saying that there was skullduggery going there, but at the same you. time, yeah, at the same time, it's better that you have all your T's crossed and I's dotted. Um, you're running, right? So you need to fundraise, you need to get volunteers. You know, one way to focus on it is not to say, oh, I need to raise $50,000 and then just aim for that. Say, okay, I need to raise five, let's, if I had $500, what would I do with it? If I had $1,000, what would I do with it? So start smaller and then build over time. So you know, well, okay, what's the immediate things I'm gonna need flyers and, um, and then as you're progressing in your fundraising, for example, you can then fill those things out. So that way you don't have some really large goal. And if, oh, well, if we don't get it, now our budget was only 50,000 and we don't know what we got if we, we don't know what we do if we only got 20,000. So do those in stages. Think about that for volunteers as well. Um, I want to emphasize always thank people who help you out. If you can write them a note, that's great. <coughs> Verbally is good too. Um, some people will say, you know, oh, you need to thank me, but the, it, it's just generally a good idea. Um, all right, so I'm going to try and wrap it up before we go to questions, but all right. Dor so you're running for town community member, you know, you want to do some door knocking, but the number, the threshold of voters you need is low. But if you're running for state representative, you're talking many thousands of voters, um, you really need to door knock. And that is you can get the list of voters from uh, all the towns or the cities in your district, get someone who can put them into a database, and then literally, you know, I, how you want to segment that and decide, well, I should go after these people or not, or maybe I'll concentrate more on my town versus other towns or whatever is something you and your campaign will have to figure out, but you need to do the door knocking, <laughs> assuming, you know, for two reasons. So, so if you want to win, that's the way to win, right? Because turnout is everything. But even if your objective is, well, I just want to get the Pirate Party message out. So if I, if I were running for state representative and I had knocked on 2,000 doors and I knew 1,000 of those people were going to vote for me, for example, then I know 
a thousand people are going to vote for me, which means in two years, if I run again, or if I, in, say, in Somerville, were to run for Board of Aldermen or something, I have a thousand people that I've talked with and who supported me as the candidate and hopefully the Pirate Party. And so, no, whereas just dropping leaflets, you have no input. You, you don't have no feedback as to uh, how you're doing. And in terms of building a long term, uh, building long term, that's the best way literally knocking on doors. But once you've knocked on doors and you've got your nice database that says, you know, a five, this is person's going to vote for me, and a one, this person's going to vote against me, um, you know, you only want to turn out the fours and fives, just for example. Uh, you want to turn voters out. And that, you know, that can be, um, you know, dropping off flyers before, the, before election day, and uh, making sure they, they get the, hey, election day is this time. Your polling place is here. This is what you need to do. It could also be people not coming by in that evening. You know, polls usually open till 8. Um, so people coming by at 5 o'clock, uh, you know, have you voted? Please vote. Um, ultimately, you know, on election day, the more people you have, so if you have someone who's in every uh, precinct voting place who can sit there, they can't say anything, but they can sit there and as people go and vote, they can have their own list and check people off. So you check up all the people who have voted for you. So when the people do the door knocking later in that afternoon, uh, they've got that list of, I don't need to knock on this door, they've already voted, this person hasn't. Um, the other thing to think about is we have early voting. So that pushes things, you know, it might have been that we can go up to election day for our door knocking. Now you've got to do it a lot earlier because people can vote early. Again, if you've got a, a primary, then you need to, you know, you have a dry run to go through this whole process so that you can win the primary. Yes? Early voting, I think in Massachusetts is only federal. I think... Um... It's only for the November election. Yeah. It includes federal and state. Oh, okay. That was just a general. Um, and then the, you know, you know, you can have you can have people holding signs, but really making sure your voters turn out is the best, you know, best thing you can do. Um, you know, at the end, have your campaign party, deal with any last debt and all that. Uh, but the last thing I'll just end with is, you know, don't be afraid to try new ideas. I mean, I. I think it's good to plan things out, but leave some spontaneity, leave, try different things. Uh, don't just go with one plan. There's a lot of good books out there that talk about running and winning, um, but be willing to try new things. So that's pretty much my knowledge. I hope that's helpful. Um, I normally would take a lot longer and walk you through this process uh, in more detail, but are there other questions folks have? Yeah. So when you were when you were going on and building um, building your network, did you have you know, like like um, neighborhood posts who would people who already supported you who were willing to go with you door to door and say he's wonderful, please vote for him, as opposed to just you're going solo unknown to a door um, and trying to you know sell your um, platform. I think you want to do both. I, for example, when I was gathering signatures in my first run, we went to the big environmental festival on, in Boston. And um, I remember, uh, I, you know, we had two other candidates. We had a candidate who was running for governor and lieutenant governor. So there was my sheet, of course, on top, and then there were the other candidates. And, um, you know, I would say, hey, I'm running for a state treasurer. Would you sign my nomination paper? And this guy, this biker guy, said, sure, and he, he signed it, and I flipped it over, and I said, hey, would you sign for the other candidates I'm, I'm running with? And he said, are they here? I said, no, then I'm not signing. <laughs> so I think having the presence of the candidate helps, even if you're doing it alone. I don't recommend, if you can go with other people, I think that's more effective, and certainly if you've got a supporter who's willing to, to say, on this date, at this time, at my house, come over to my house, meet this candidate. I think they're, 
I think they're the bee's knees and you should meet them, by all means do that. I mean, it, it's said that you need seven, that you need to interact with a voter seven times before they'll think of voting for you. So the more, you know, like in, in, in soccer, right, you know, I, you know, for my daughter, it's more touches on the ball, more effort of having practice. In a sense, it's not necessarily practice with, it's not practice, but it's, it's more interactions with uh, voters, with a particular voter means they're more likely to concern to, so to vote for you. local coffee shops and on Saturday morning and the uh, weekend? Uh, I think that's, I, I think if the choice, I think that, I think if the choice is knock on a door or sit there where people may or may not come up to you, I think knocking on the door is the better thing. Oh, oh I was thinking, no, dump. Yeah, no, not thinking you. That's what I was too. Oh, well, the problem is you don't know, so it's a random person at a, at a coffee shop. They may be in your district, they may not be in your district. If you knock on their house, you know they're in your district. The districts are defined. Well, the dump people have to register at the dump. That's true. That's actually one of the. When, when we were running in two thousand two, um, good stuff. In, in terms of no, in terms of uh, nominating, so we you know we concentrated in our office was in Somerville, and so we do Somerville, Cambridge, Boston. Um, and that's a very transitory population, so we wouldn't always get people who are voting, but we found the most effective ways were literally to go to some town dump on a Saturday and just wait there. Because you knew anyone was coming there lived in the town. And that's the other thing, the nomination papers are town specific. So, you know, if you're like, oh, you're from Boston and you're from Cambridge and you're from Oxford and you're from, you know, wherever, it's a lot of nomination papers that you need, whereas it's like, well, we're in the box for a dump. All right, <laughs> just sign. That's much easier. And that's the thing. I mean, I, you know, I, when I ran in 2002, uh, we had a very low success rate. But in our last election, going door to door was really high in terms, I think it was something like 90 to 95% success rate in terms of if someone signed, their signature was good. Um, that's the other thing I'll emphasize for getting on the ballot is don't get a bunch of signatures and wait and then drop them all off. It's like, okay, we went out this weekend, we got 50 signatures. Monday, go to the town clerk's office, the election division, and drop them off. Always get a receipt. Uh, <clears throat> and then get any others that they've already processed because then you would get immediate, every week you know what your count is. Um, you know, we had one case in, um, where we did that in uh, 2014. We had two candidates running for state rep and, uh, you know, we, we were very diligent with um, doing it in one district and the other candidate had a harder time getting started and knowing where because they were a more rural district. We were in a city, it's, you just walk down the street. Um, and so it looked like they wouldn't make it, so we knew they had to be on. So we just got a whole bunch of people and just came out and did door knocking and got the nomination papers and got them, you know, enough that they could finish it that Monday, that Tuesday, and then drop them off. And that, that made the difference. So if you're ahead, you, you know, from a pirate perspective or green or libertarian or even Democrat or Republican, you can then go and help others get on the ballot if you're all set. Or, you know, you're on the ballot, you know you're on the ballot, and now you can focus on running more in your campaign. Mm -hmm. all all right, right, questions? Um, I think that's all the time we have Great. right now. Thank you all very much. Thank you.